What is up guys, Grimlock here, back with another Elemental Shaman, or just a count video, I guess you could say. Uh, I'm going to be talking about my macros and my key bindings in this video to help you become a better arena player, and just an overall better player in general. So I hope you enjoy the video. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below if you have any questions at all. Thanks. So getting into it guys, uh, I'm just going to give a short explanation of what macros are. Basically macros are just buttons you can press um, that allow you to activate multiple things at a single time or just allow ease of access to your abilities or just for targeting purposes. Um, so to give you an example, you type slash M. It opens up your general macros and also opens up your character specific macros. So we're going to go over my character specific macros today. So to give you guys an idea of what a macro really is, uh, we're going to look over here at my burst macro. Now, just so you guys know, most of my macros, they don't have names. Now, you can name your macros, so they come up on text like this. You see how this says focus on my bars? But um, I have some without names, and the way you do this, so if you were to create a new one, you can just put a space as your, as your name for your ability. Um, now you don't need to select an icon either if you wanted it to be a specific icon So for instance, I want it to be sky fury totem. I would type in the numeric symbol or the hashtag symbol Type in show tooltip and then space sky fury totem Now if I save this it'll come up as sky fury totem and this would track the cooldown of sky fury totem as well So if I pressed so if I put this in my bar here and I press sky fury totem You'll see it also shows sky fury totem going down as well very simple, um, easy thing to do. You can use this with any ability or even an item. So say for instance, you wanted it to be tracking your trinkets or anything like that. You just click in here, uh, you shift click it in, and there you go. You have a, your uh, macro now tracking your trinket as long as you click save. Just make sure you click save after you do everything to your macros. Um, but that is just a very basic beginning to almost every macro you're gonna put onto your bars. Going into the next step of how to do macroing. Uh, so like I said, we do the show tooltip bar. This is just showing my blood fury. It's my longest cooldown, my two minute cooldown. Then we go straight into my next cooldown that I want, I want to activate. So this next line is what I'm actually activating. So I'm gonna use my trinket. Um, now this only uses the badge. So see how I have the emblem here. This isn't gonna use my emblem because I don't want my emblem to be used during my burst. I would want my badge to be used if I had a badge, which I don't have a badge right now, but I'm kind of tempted to get one and see how that works. But anyways, that's for another video. Um, but you know, you can use your, your trinket here if you needed to. Um, your next ability would be in a burst ability and then um, I'm an orc so I have blood fury so that's my last ability so realistically all this macro does for me right now because I don't have a badge and I don't use the ascendance actual ability um, is just cast blood fury for me but I have it set on my bar so that if I ever did pick ascendance as an ability it would also cast ascendance for me at the same exact time now ascendance and blood fury do share a cooldown if you pick the proper talents here so if you go over here you would click ascendance so you see how it's a three minute cooldown this next one though here reduces the cooldown of ascendance by 30 seconds now there's two ranks to this so it would reduce it by a minute so you'd be looking at a two minute cooldown for ascendance a two minute cooldown for blood fury and if you can see here when i'm casting something my blood fury is off global cooldown which means it'll cast at the same exact time as anything that is also off global cooldown or has a global cooldown you can have one thing that's on global cooldown and then everything else that's off global cooldown be macroed into one button to explain to you what a global cooldown is is every single time you cast a spell in order to prevent you from casting seven things at once blizzard implements a global cooldown and so you can see that in this little timer that goes by here every single time i go to cast something so the second i go to cast something i can't cast anything else unless if it's off global cooldown so to note things that are off global cooldown are your astro shift which is your defensive ability there are also nature swiftness which is kind of a defensive ability it could be used as an offensive ability but realistically it's going to be a, uh, a defensive ability most of the time your blood fury which is just a ratio for orc and your wind shear which is super crucial because this means that every time you go to kick you can kick at any point in time you don't have to kick for instance um off global cooldown so if you're if you're casting something you can kick somebody that's actually casting something as well uh to interrupt them which is huge and important but everybody's kick is off global cooldown to give you an idea 
All right, we're going to take a look at my specific macros and how I utilize them. So we'll take a look at my main defensive macro to start with. Um, this is my Astro Shift. So the second I click Astro Shift, what happens is is I Astro Shift. I also cast Ancestral Guidance, and I'll explain why I have this in here. I use uh, my Health Stone if I have one, if I'm playing with a Warlock, which a lot of the Elemental Shamans I know out there are because they're super good right now. And I also cast my Emblem, which is my Gladiator, or, well, my Aspirants, um, emblem which is a battle master trinket which increases your health by a significant amount in pvp now this is a really nice trinket for shaman because one it gives you a flat um intellect boost which is nice to begin with um and then also the increased health um also works with your nature's guardian so say you're at a bunch of health you have a big health pool because of your um emblem there when you're dropped below 35% health, you'll heal for 20% of your health. Now, 20% of your health with the emblem is much higher than it was without the emblem, obviously. So, um, when you're feeling a lot of when you're feeling a lot of pressure, you're going to utilize that. Um, the reason why I use ancestral guidance in this macro, normally I would separate the two, so I have both. Um, but the reason I don't is because the game is so bursty right now that you actually kind of have to play with everything macroed into one, which is a shame, but, um, you know, if the game gets a little more less bursty, I guess you could say, as the season goes on, which it normally does, the further the season goes on, the longer people live, and, um, the longer the people live, the more I'll probably take out this Ancestral Guidance and have it as just a separate button altogether. I might even macro it in with my Earth Elemental. Who knows? Earth Elemental is a great tool. Um, same thing. I do keep Earth Elemental separate from everything as it is on global cooldown here. So um, I can't macro it in with that. Well, I could technically, but I would have to be off global cooldown to have the Earth Elemental pop out. But I'll show you what the macro does. So when the second I click my defensive here, which is my Shift D, I click this. I pops my gladiator's emblem it pops astral shift and it pops ancestral guidance all at the same exact time uh there's no no lag in between i don't have to click multiple buttons it all pops all at once so that's kind of great um defensively lets me live for a much longer period of time uh, now to switch it up, we're going to go over to um, some of our focus macros. Um, I don't use all of my focus macros. I just have them preset just in case I did want to use them. But I do have a focus frost shock here. I also have a focus wind shear. I do use focus wind shear all the time. This is super important. And basically what this lets me do is that when I have a focus target, so for instance, I have a focus target here. When they're casting a spell, so you see how they're casting here, I could focus cast uh, wind shear on them. I can be targeting somebody completely different. So say I'm targeting this person and this person starts casting I can focus kick them without ever having to swap targets now this is super important because a lot of the times you don't have the reaction speed to target this person kick them and then target back to your main target so a lot of times I could be doing a lot of damage to my main target and at the same time because my kick is off global cooldown I am kicking the focus target which tends to be the healer a lot of the time um, sometimes it's just an off target that's doing a bunch of damage so helps a bunch this is super important um, notice I put the stop casting line in here um, I do that for both of my kicks and the reason why I do that is because I noticed when I for some reason even though it's off global cooldown when I'm casting something it wants me to finish the cast um, when I go to kick so by doing this if I'm finished if I'm casting like a heal and I see somebody casting like um, say polymorph or something like that I can kick them um, immediately because it'll immediately stop my healing surge from going off um, which is great and I can also use this to fake kicks so if I'm casting and somebody's trying to it's like trying to kick me I can use my kick to bait them into kicking me and if I can do that properly then they use their interrupt and I don't have to worry about it anymore I can actually just cast out my abilities without the fear of being interrupted Going back to what focus macros where you're going to want as a shaman, um, a lot of the times I use focus purge. This is massive. So a lot of the times I can purge off nature swiftness from shamans. I can purge off um, purge off the, nat the NS from druids uh, as well. Um, the second it happens, as long as I'm watching my focus frame really closely, I also use, obviously, the focus target um, wind shear. I do use focus hex, which is right here. Focus hex. Um, which is right above my normal hex keybind, and I can show you my keybinds in a second. Um, I do use focus pulverize when I am running um, primal elementalist. Now it's pretty rare I run primal elementalist, but Ursh 
the Earth Elemental and Primal Elementalist has an ability called Pulverize. It is a, a couple second stun. I believe it's a four second stun. Um, but you can use this on a focus target. So if you have the focus target Pulverize, you can have that on your bar and it will stun your focus instead of your main target. So you can focus target Pulverize into a focus target Hex all while targeting your main target and doing damage the whole time. Um, now these are great utility. I don't use too many other focus macros. I have focus target Gale Force here, which is if you're running Storm Elemental and Primal Elementalist, it, the Primal Storm Elemental has an ability called Gale Force. And what Gale Force does is it knocks your enemy in the air. Um, at least they used to. I haven't run it since the Dragonflight, so I'm assuming it's the same thing because it's always been that, but if they change that, I'm sorry. I do have a Bloodlust macro that is slash cast at um, my teammate. Um, the reason being is when I was playing Enhancement Shaman, you pick up the talent, the PvP talent that lets you use Bloodlust in PvP. And this just immediately lets me target my teammate with the Bloodlust and uh, instantly use it. So that's kind of huge. Uh, that's really important if you're playing Enhancement Shaman. Um, nothing else too crazy. I don't think there's anything... Um, I would suggest, yeah, I think you're all set. You are all taken care of. Talking about focusing, we go over to my general macros here, and um, you'll see I have a, quite a few focus macros in here. I use these across a bunch of different characters, but the main ones are my focus 1, my focus 2, and my focus 3 macros. Now, these are just very simple write-outs, just slash focus arena 1. I can even incorporate, if I wanted to, I could do a show tooltip, say, you know, healing surge. Um, wow, that was really loud, Dragon. So Healing Surge, you know, I can click this. So now my focus comes up as Healing Surge if I wanted it to. I don't know why I would want that, but I'm just saying it is possible if you wanted to show Tooltip. I just tend not to, so that's why you see a bunch of question, mar question marks in my top uh, <laughs> right-hand corner over here. Uh, these are all targeting macros. So to show you how those work, I can target anybody, and um, I have a focus target macro as well. Um, this is just as simple as typing literally slash focus space target. Um, I'll show these macros in my description as well. But when you go to target somebody and you have a focus macro, you click that button, it immediately puts them as your focus. So if I'm doing this, I can you know click on somebody, focus them. This is great for battlegrounds because a lot of the times you don't have select arena frames or anything like that, unless if they're like a flag carrier. So in order to focus somebody, I can like click a healer that's, you know, doing casting in the background, I can focus them and then I can start targeting their teammates and then I can kick their healer as I'm t doing a lot of damage. Um, so this is these are great targeting macros here. So going back to my focus macros, we have focus arena 1, focus arena 2, and focus arena 3. Now what this means is, is when you look at your arena um, window when they pop up in the corner here, or if you have gladius, they'll pop up in a box here, it goes 1, 2, 3. So the, it goes in order from top down to the bottom. Um, that's the order of your focus arena one, two, and threes. So you'll have to adjust kind of which one you're clicking and you get used to it muscle memory wise, um, depending on the team comp. Cause sometimes the healer's not always one. Sometimes the healer is three, sometimes the healer is two. So you'll have to determine who you want to focus during the game and during the match that way. Now, just on the opposite side of things here, we also have our targeting macros, which are target. Um, so slash target arena one, we have slash target arena 2, and we also have slash target arena 3. Now what this does is if I'm clicking 1, 2, or 3, which is my shift 1, shift 2, and shift 3, um, those will allow me to target arena 1, arena 2, and arena 3. So instead of having to click somebody or tab target them, I use these macros in order to target my targets all the time. The only time I'm click targeting or if I'm um, tab targeting is there's pets so I can apply flame shocks to pets or if there's like a shaman with totems a lot of the times what I'll do is like if there's a cap stun around me I'll click the cap stun ASAP and I'll frost shock it frost shock insta kills cap totems most of the time I'm like 90% of the time sure it kills them instantly um, some shamans are running guardians cudgel uh, this places an immediate cap stun totem the problem with guardians cudgel and I don't think a lot of shamans realize it is if you targeted the original cap stun and killed it it will auto target the second cap stun so i can just click this like cl i can click say he's a cap stun kill the cap stun and then the second time it spawns immediately it auto targets the second cap stun i don't know why this is a thing but you can just immediately hit frost shock again you don't even have to retarget it so it's it's super easy to kill the guardian's cudgel but um just to give you an example those are my targeting macros i also have party macros so i can target my teammates and myself 
Um, this isn't too helpful. I don't use these that often, actually. Most of the time, I'm just clicking my party frames. But for healers, um, targeting your your party is very important. So I'll show you those as well. It's just simple as target slash target party one slash target party two slash target party three party four going onward and then um, you know to target yourself it's just slash target player now the problem with slash target player is some people like to be really tricky in high MMR games like hunters and they'll name their pet player for instance right so say you go to target yourself with your macro and you you know you have target self player um, it'll actually target the pet instead of you which isn't too important because most of the time when you're going to cast something on yourself, if you're targeting an enemy, it will still target you. But if you're playing with a hunter and they have this macro, uh, just be careful you don't accidentally start healing their pet. <laughs> so just to watch out for that, guys. But these are my targeting macros. Alright guys, I'm going to quickly go over my key bindings for you. Now you'll notice on my first action bar here, I do have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now I use a normal standard keyboard. I mean, it's a gaming keyboard, but it's a normal standard keyboard. And I don't have a gaming mouse specifically for um, MMO games. So I don't actually have one with all 12 buttons. I know some mouses do have all 12 buttons. Some mouses have 9. Some mouses have 6. I just have 2 buttons, which is actually my tremor and my um, trinket. So those are on my mouse. The rest of my buttons are all my keyboard binds. So I have one, two, three, four, and five as my normal abilities. Then I have control, one, two, three, four, and five as some extra abilities here. I use control uh, two as like a root. My control one is basically another flame shock. So you'll see that I kind of duplicate that there. Um, I don't really, there's no rhyme or reason why I have control keybinds specifically you could use shift keybinds here instead i have just always used my shift keybinds as targeting macros and i've used alt keybinds as focus macros um for for arena frames so going from this first bar we're going to go to the second bar here i have my middle mouse button as my spirit walk so i click down on my mouse wheel that activates spirit walk um i strafe with z and c i don't actually move with any other like buttons i just use Z and C to strafe and I double click my mouse button so I click down my left mouse and my right mouse button to move forward. I don't have a backward keybind or a sh like a backpedal keybind other than my arrow key. Um, that's because I never backpedal and the reason being is you significantly reduce your movement speed when you backpedal so instead I just strafe backwards while kind of jump flicking my mouse in order to cast off abilities. You'll never see me backpedal. Um, it's a super important thing to not backpedal in PvP because it allows you to kite much, much easier versus melee comps. It just allows you to play the game a lot more smoothly if you're not backpedaling. Now, the only class you'll backpedal on is surprisingly like Warriors and Windwalker Monks, and the reason being is they parry abilities. And in order to parry abilities is like, you'll have to be facing your target. And so sometimes when you're kiting away from them, you wanna backpedal away from them so that you're parrying their Abilities, which is kind of ironic um, because PvPing for a long period of time you never used to backpedal but nowadays those specific classes do still backpedal um, you also see Pickaboo um, specifically he'll backpedal a lot because um, as rogues you have evasion and you can only dodge attacks from the front so when you pop evasion you have to almost backpedal in order to keep the target in front of you at all times so you're not taking any damage because sometimes if you're strafe um, strafe kiting if you have evasion up it'll still count as your back and you'll still get hit by abilities which is kind of silly but anyways that doesn't apply to shaman shamans you will never backpedal on um, while you're kiting you'll always just use ghost wolf and be flicking your your keyboard and your mouse one direction as you kite somebody so say I'm kiting this this mob right here I will always just kite backwards like this jumping or sometimes i won't even be jumping sometimes i'll just be strafing like this but either way you can strafe back and forth to move backwards you never have to actually backpedal in this game um, moving on to um, my keybinds though like i said here uh my x keybind is actually bound to a special macro so like if i'm playing a rogue it'll activate stealth or if i'm playing a druid it'll activate bear form um it's my first button here my a, S, D, and F are macro to these abilities here, which is Frost Shock, Ghost Wolf, Healing Surge, and, and uh, Lightning Lasso. Now, my D is always my heal across all my characters. It's one, it's one. It'll always be my heal. It's just how I always 
macro all my keybinds. Now these are all personal preference, um, so I know everybody's keybinding is going to be different. So if you always macro your kick, for instance, I always macro when my kick is R, and this way across characters I'm creating muscle memory. So when I'm playing my shaman, it's almost the same way I feel like I'm playing my evoker because my kicks are both on R and my focus kick is S like shift R. So if I were to focus kick somebody, I would press down shift and I would click R. Simple as that. Uh, moving on to my last bar here, we have my burst ability, which is shift F. You'll notice that on my other characters, F is normally like a calm burst ability, which is why I have lightning lasso here. Um, sometimes I would put like Sky Fury there a long time ago. Um, honestly, I might do that again because it, it macros pretty well. But either way, um, I put like a, a calm burst ability or ability that's under a one minute cooldown as my normal F that increases my damage or does a lot of damage. Um, like for my evoker, it's deep breath. But my shift F is my main burst ability, which causes me to do a lot of damage. So I just kind of keep those things consistent. Uh, like I said, my heal is always D, so it only makes sense that my defensive is shift D. Because, you know, if I'm like playing defensive or I'm healing, I could just press shift, click D, and that's all taken care of. Now, uh, my knockbacks are always control D, because um, knockbacks tend to be an, an offensive ability. I mean, obviously they can be offensive as well, but um, a lot of the times you're knocking back because you're in a defensive state. So, all my defensive abilities are under D and all my aggressive abilities are under F. Um, it's just consistent across my keybinds. My W tends to be my hex, but I don't really hex outside of focus hexing, So, uh, or a lot of the times I can control my focus depending on this here. Um, I can also focus target if I needed to into a hex, so my, my focus hex is actually my shift W, and my W has now become my nature swiftness for an instant cast heal, um, which, you know, like I said, it's just it's just how I keep buying things. My purges are always on Q. My focus purges shift Q. So if I have an ability and then I have that ability focusing something, a lot of the times it's the shift version of that ability. So like a long time ago, um, when I didn't have these targeting macros here, I used to have shift one be my um, focus flame shock if I did use that. And then I would have shift A, for instance, my shift A is here. I would have that be my frost shock, my focus frost shock, but now that's become static field totem or grounding totem, depending on what I'm playing. Um, you'll notice that my ghost wolf is my S, and that falls under the same thing as my slow here, which is my earthbind totem. So if I'm kiting, I can press S and I can press S, like shift S. So it, it, it kind of macros into each other very well. It feels smooth with each other. Um, now that's the point is is just trying to get your keybinds as muscle memory as possible. Um, now, like I said, everybody's keybinding is different. It's almost like in an FPS game, everybody's sensitivity is different. So when you're playing Call of Duty or you're playing Overwatch, for instance, your sensitivity is always going to be different than another player's sensitivity. Now, my keybindings are always going to be different than another player's keybindings. I've never seen somebody with keybindings very similar to this, but if you want to give them a try, you can. It takes a long time to get used to these keybindings as I move around with my mouse. So if you're used to pressing a button like W to walk forward, it's going to take you a long time to get used to these because I don't walk with a button I walk with my mouse so these are just an example of what my key bindings are I know it's a little bizarre um, but that is that is how I key bind my abilities guys Alrighty guys, that is it for my keybinding and macro video. Now as always, if you ever have any questions or concerns or anything you can think of, uh, please feel free to leave that below in the comments. Make sure you like and subscribe. I know my keybindings are a little weird, but everybody's keybindings are unique to themselves, so please um, you know, test some things out, try some things out yourself, get used to your own key bindings, but make sure you get those focus macros in there because they're super important and will definitely elevate your arena gameplay to the next level. I plan on doing a video in a little bit, hopefully within the next week, of what add-ons I use. Um, just to give you a little rundown, I do use Gladius. I also use Omnibar to track um, opponents' like cooldowns as well as their kicks. 
but I don't use anything too crazy. Um, I know a lot of people are using some crazy stuff out there now, but I just don't use too much. So, um, But I will do a video on my um, add-on soon. I also plan on putting out another video on uh, just some Ellie um, gameplay, uh, some high-rated arenas once I get up there soon. I haven't been able to play too much Ellie this season, but I do promise you guys I will get you out some content ASAP. I also have my Devastation Evoker. I plan on putting some content out for as well. I also have a Boomkin, so I'm excited to show you guys some stuff that's coming in the near future. But I hope you guys have a great day, and uh, I'll see you guys again soon.